Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dork down for a while. Oh, and welcome to the Dork Forest. I'm Jackie Cation. I am your host of the Dork Forest. You probably know the websites, JackieCation.com, DorkForest.com, TheDorkForest.com. We're all over iTunes and whoever has downloaded it and repurposed it for whatever your needs. That's right. So feel free to review the show on iTunes. Uh, feel free to email me, Jackie at JackieCation.com, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns. Anyway, uh, let's do the credits. Mike Rickbert composed and sang that song you just heard. He sang it with his wife, Sarah. He'll sing again his words to the Mexican hat dance at the end of the program. Patrick Brady is going to fix this audio, and Vilmos does my website. Okay, there are many ways to support the show. Let's talk about them. The easiest way is just to tell other people about the show, and follow me on Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat, at Jackie Cation, and tell people uh, word of mouth, word of mouth. Another way to support the show, financially, doesn't cost you anything, is the Amazon banner. On JackieCation.com, there's an Amazon banner under Support the Show, and on dorkforest.com, there's just an Amazon link that takes you to Amazon. And both take you to Amazon, you order like normal, and the show gets a little bit of a kickback. Doesn't cost you extra. It's just a way, if you order from Amazon, to help the show. More direct way of helping the show, you can uh, give money to the show via PayPal. There's a PayPal button under the Support the Show page on JackieCation.com, and there's a PayPal button on dorkforest.com. You can donate directly. If you want to give monthly, I haven't made that easy. I don't have a monthly setup. Uh, I know that it's easy. Uh, I just don't have any time to do it. So you have to remember every month that you like the show and then give me money. So uh, I'll use it wisely on audio cables and chocolate, whatever. Uh, another way to support the show, if you don't like PayPal, is people have been Venmoing me money. I'll take it. That seems lovely. Jackie at JackieCation.com. It's just under Jackie Cation. So whatever. If you have listened to all 600 and whatever episodes of the Dork Forest and would like more Dork Forest, there are premium episodes, probably a dozen of them. And they are, in the last couple of years, if I do a live episode, it usually costs me some money. So I have been putting them up on Bandcamp and they cost money. They cost two bucks a pop. But if you go to the dorkforest.bandcamp.com, you can see those different shows. They're usually live episodes around the world. And there is also a uh, four four stories on a, on a sort of a handmade storytelling album that I made over there too. And those are just a buck each. So if you want to go to Bandcamp, you can do that as well. You can order merch on JackieCation.com. There are shirts and CDs and a DVD of my standup. There's the standup CDs, Circus People. It's never going to be bread. This will make an excellent Horcrux and my brand new album. I am not the hero of this story. And they're all available as CDs on JackieCation.com. They're all available digitally on Amazon and iTunes. And you can just listen to them on Pandora and Spotify and whatever. So, but if you like hard copies, let me know if you want them signed or not. Um, there's also a DVD of the Horcrux album, which is video. That's what a DVD is. And you can download that at ComedyFilmNerds.com if you just like a download. Okay, there are shirts. There's my stand-up shirt, Spooky Reading Girl. There's also two Dork Forest t-shirts. There's the Ranger of the Dork Forest t-shirt, and there is a Dork Forest logo shirt. And all the shirts are made in the United States, union-made, so they run a little big because they're made by Americans. Other than that, my stand-up is available on the website on JackieCation.com. You can watch my Conan sets. You can watch a bunch of different stand-up sets. You can, and then you can see what my schedule's like. Enough of this. Let's get into the show. It's a really good one. Hey, it's Jackie Cation. I'm in my living room, you guys. Guess who's back? Five years, <laughs> never aired, Chip Chinnery. Yes, we're going to repeat the lost episode. We're going to repeat the lost episode, you guys. Uh, I have one other episode that didn't work, and I also was not the hero of that story. <laughs> That's never being repeated. I don't think it can be. So uh, here's what I have to say. Chip Chinnery has chipsmoneytips.com. I subscribe. Yeah. Everyone should subscribe. It's free. It is free. How do you not subscribe to something free? It's true. And then uh, it's at Chips Money Tips on tw Twitter and Instagram or whatever is and out Facebook there. Facebook. Facebook and all the things. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, your dorkdom, first of all, when you were on, I deleted it. I said, <laughs> I got really upset about it because it turns out money is triggering for me. And is I, it? I, yeah, it really is. Oh, okay. And so, and you said, well, if neither of us come off good, just delete it. What, what, yeah. Why are we? We can do this in five years from now. <laughs> exactly. We can reschedule this, which is exactly how the scheduling problem exists. Yeah. And I is. heard you on another podcast, your other podcast with Lori Jackie talking about Laurie. Wanting, wanting to go to a Paris. And I was like, oh. Because I noticed that my website started getting all these people subscribing them, and they had referred, it said referred by Jackie Cation. I was like, well, right. wait, what? And so I emailed you. You said, oh, I mentioned it on the other podcast. And yep. And then I listened to your podcast on the other one, and they were talking about, and oh, that, I want to go to Paris. And that stand up, that's just a, that's a stand up podcast with me and Lori Kilmartin just yeah. bitching about stand up comedy. So, um, yeah, it's just us on and on. Okay. <laughs> talking about like word choice in our in jokes. I listened uh, to that who podcast, bitches but I hadn't doesn't. Yeah. yeah, who who books whatever and, really? and how to not care. It's like someone, hanging out in a condo, a comedy it's condo. It's very much so, except for neither of us approve of condos anymore because we're both 50. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Somehow that wears leave off. us alone. <laughs> we would like a hotel please like yeah. people. So, yes, I did mention that um Andy and I are going to Iceland, but I'd been saving up to go to Paris. And so you were like, oh, my gosh, I could I could spend time figuring out how you could go to Paris for free. And sure, let's do it. First yeah. of all, let me tell you, uh, you were the first one. And this had to be five or six years ago. Yeah. But you were the first one who said, do you have a dedicated credit card uh, for <laughs> and do you have a dedicated airline? And I had neither. I yeah. had neither of those two things. And because of rage, I never did. And then Augie Smith, a year later, was like, do you have a dedicated airline? Do you have a dedicated credit card? And again, <laughs> didn't listen. And then for some reason, Maria Bamford's mom yeah. said, you have to do it. And uh, Jackie, come on. Because <laughs> you're and flying was, all over the place. I'm all flying the all over the place. And then I committed to Delta yeah. and Southwest. And yeah. I got a Delta card and a Southwest card because the Delta is an Amex. You can't use it everywhere. Great. And Southwest uh, is sometimes cheaper. And a great airline. And a great airline. So uh, I have those two cards. Perfect. And I just, I got it from Chip's Money Tips. I like that even better. <laughs> I went through and I got the Hilton. I got the, the Amex Hilton that I got to spend three grand on. Piece of cake. In the next three months. Yeah. I ordered new t-shirts. That's $33 a day. Everybody uh, order t-shirts from uh, from Jackie and Laurie that I just ordered uh, and paid for with a credit card. Yeah. That's uh, that's wise. Uh, right. That's a, that's a, that's a month. Because also and Delta is one of these airlines that it flies almost everywhere. So right. if you need to go somewhere, especially like if you if a family member dies and you got to catch a plane <laughs> to Cincinnati. Why are you killing people? Ah, these ship? things happen just to sell some credit cards. <laughs> you know, I got commissions on the links on the website, Jackie. You got to make some progress. Right. You gotta- you know, I got to fund my uh, my whatever. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So, yeah, let's say somebody's graduating from high school. Let's yes. say there's a oh, baptism. Something positive. Let's, something positive. Let's say somebody. Let's say you and a bunch of your friends from high school or college or or uh, when you all worked at Olive Garden that one summer <laughs> are having a reunion. Yeah, and you're all going to South Carolina. For no South reason, Carolina. except for to say, hey. Let's go to South Carolina. Get your yeah. shit together. South I don't Carolina. like to pay for flights. You don't? No. Do you Do you mostly not pay for flights? I haven't paid for flights in years. It has to be like a $200 flight for me to go, well, I'll just pay for that because I value the points at $2 a piece <laughs> yes. or whatever, two you cents double. a piece. So right. why would I do that? But in other cases, you usually just get a new card. I'd like figure it out, massage that the card, the a card offer, yes, into a free flight. The or key free to everything. Yeah. The key to everything uh, regarding credit cards is the sign up bonus because they they used to be oh get twenty five thousand miles if you buy, get a Delta card or yeah. a United card or an American Airlines card and spend a thousand bucks. Well, then the offers kept getting bigger and bigger. Now it's more common that they're fifty thousand miles okay if you spend the thousand dollars within three months okay and then now there are some that are even better yeah Yeah, there's an eighty thousand point bonus on a certain chase card and you can frequent flyer miles you can convert those points there's these are either miles out there mile credit cards which are dedicated to a certain airline okay or there are credit cards that offer points that you can then use to get other things like airline miles or hotel stays or rental cars so you convert the points the into points other into other things. Okay. Yeah. So, and and it's almost always Chase, right? Chase. Chase American is the Express. big dog right now, and American Express is right there too. American or, uh, American Airlines is still through City. That's still fine. A Citibank. Citibank. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Uh, but Chase is right now making the best offers. 
Right, they have the most credit cards. I have. They probably I have, do. Yeah. I even have some dormant credit cards yeah. with them. And now, what do you do with the dormant ones? This is very important. Do not cancel them. Don't cancel them. Do not cancel them. Because yeah. it's better for your credit rating it's or something? It's better for your credit score because part of your FICO score. FICO is the big dog in your credit score world. Okay. Fair Isaac's company is what FICO. What does uh, it stand for? Fair Isaac and Company. Okay. It's, I think that FICO. I got that right. F-I-C-O. F-I-C-O. FICO. FICO. FICO is a mm. tax you pay. Let's okay. not get those confused. Right, right. I was I was telling somebody today that I'm I'm trying to pick up a set in Iceland because while I'm a tax and pay Democrat, I'm yeah. not I'm 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 not a victim. You're not an idiot. I'm not an idiot. Let's pick up a set. Yeah. yeah. There's, no, there's no Democrat or Republican or liberal or conservative who doesn't say, "Hey, can I write that off?" Exactly. I'd love to write I'd that. I'd like off. to pay less tax. Are we cool about that? I mean, right. I like things for everybody. But right. I, I'm in favor of roads and yeah. and, and education, but I also. Uh, yeah, I, I can pick up a set in Iceland. Yeah, that'll be fine. That's smart. I've been offered. But the FICO thing, the sc- yeah. your credit score thing. Okay, yeah. Uh, if you have part of the FICO credit score is uh, how long you've had an account. Oh. So you don't want to cancel your old cards because that affects your average length of having a, a credit card. Or Well, what if it's a new card that you're just getting, like this this Hilton's right. Amex card? Can I cancel that? You could. Because it's 75 bucks a year. Yeah. What yeah. I do is I, I keep a card. Yep. And then if it has an annual fee, when they finally say, hey, I want to charge you the annual fee, I call the number on the back of the card and say, hey, can you waive that because I'm not really using it much anymore. Right. Because in reality, all I did was use it to meet the, credit, the spending requirement right. to get me the big sign-up bonus. Because it's a fun game bonus. for Chip Chinnery I to win. play. How many points? How many points can I get? How many miles can I get? Yeah. How do I jerry-rig the system which they have created? And they're like, if you're willing to spend a couple hours on this, I'm willing to give you these points. Yeah. And it's it's weird. My my war kind of – it's not a war, but it's my uh, feeling it's okay. It's a campaign. <laughs> yeah. It's certainly a campaign if not a war. Yeah. I don't feel bad about it because we had a little problem when my dad got older and he uh, – my mom passed away. And while she was passing away, he got depressed and didn't pay his credit card bill on time. Uh-huh. And if you do that, if you don't pay it on time – Three months in a row, they get to jack it up to 28.5% or something right, right. like it's that. Close right, close to right in the 29%, yeah. Yeah, so I decided that, that w- I tried to write them and say, hey, can you reduce this? My dad's going through a thing. My mom's dying. Yeah, yeah. And I said, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, but we can't. And I said, okay. Now I'm going to get 800 credit cards and get all right, the points. Right, and, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get this back in kind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It'll all even out, Chase. It'll all even out. Yeah, Chase needs to be taken to the bank anyway, So or oh, the credit yeah. union. Come on. <laughs> Come on. And, so, yeah, uh, so yeah, keep your credit cards. What you do, I call, see, will you waive it? They won't waive the annual fee, okay. usually. Then I say, okay, can you downgrade it to a free version yeah. of the card? Then you get a free version. And I recommend that if you, are, if you have a... Uh, American Airlines card or a United card, I recommend you getting a downgrade to the free version, which I think uh, American Airlines, is, if I recall, call it the bronze, and United has a name for it. And you don't have to pay an annual fee. Yeah. It doesn't get you the free checked bag that the card does that you pay oh, an annual fee for. Right. But you can still get one mile for every $2 you spend oh. on that card, which isn't great, but the reason to keep it. It's one to one, though. Uh, it's one to one if you pay the annual fee, but then okay. if you say, "Hey, I want to downgrade to the free card," then they'll say, "Okay, well, you're only going to get one mile for every two dollars you spend instead of one oh, mile for every dollar." Right, right. But then you say, "That's okay," that's because fine. then what you do is you keep that card and you use that card once a year to refresh your miles. You take it. I take literally. I take a stack of credit cards every January yeah. to the gas station. Okay. And I charge two dollars on all my airline cards. Pump the. I fill up my tank. Right. Two bucks at a Two crack. Two bucks at a crack. And this is super dorky. I oh, love yeah. it. I love it, Chip Chittery. <laughs> I go on my, it's, I, it's like I'm going so on a field what, trip what today. What does that do? What does that do? Well, because I have, ac- it You've does actually, many things. It activated it or something? Or? Uh, I, I, I get activity on the card. Okay. Which you want to do because otherwise your card can go dormant. And all of a sudden you'll get a letter in the mail saying, hey, we canceled your card because you haven't used it in four years. Right. And I go, no, no, no. Now oh. I don't have that credit card. I don't have that length of history on my credit score. Right. And I'm losing that. And I've lost also all the credit line that had this card. I had a $10,000 credit line on this card. Now that's gone. Okay. So now my credit score goes even lower. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you keep it alive. And then you, especially with the airline cards, you just go spend on it once a year. I've been doing that for years. That's all you need to do. Some people say, you got to do it twice a year. I just do it once a year. Yeah. No problem. It refreshes the miles. Otherwise, they expire every 18 months. 
Oh, any miles that you've gotten on that card? Yeah, expire? any miles that you have in your United account. Oh, will expire unless you refresh yeah, United, by using that card again. Yeah, United or, uh, or Amer- American? American Airlines, they expire. Their okay. miles expire. I, uh, Deltas do, do not. Right. I don't I, think Deltas do at this time. Yeah, so you, uh, that's another reason to keep your cards, downgrade them to a free version. But then if they say, we don't have a free version, or we don't have any card in our system that you can downgrade it to, and if I don't want to keep it and don't want to pay the annual fee, then I say, okay, then cancel it. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. So I literally have about 30 yeah. credit cards. Yeah. And I use two of them. I have a Visa and American Express in my wallet. That's and it. those are the two you use. Those when, are the two I use. The rest right. are in a safe or a safe mm-hmm. deposit box. And every year I take them on the field trip to the gas station. <laughs> I have um, – bef- this this year, uh, I've discussed it on, on Jackie and Lori, is I am a diamond uh, nice. on Delta. Nice work. Because of travel and because of spending on the credit card. But I got the gold credit card uh, so that I could get the free luggage. And okay. it was, I think – it was probably seventy five bucks a year, or it might have been a hundred. I think it was a hundred bucks a year. But I, I, I figured I paid that much in in luggage. Yes, I think it's ninety five a year. They all seem to be ninety five. Is that what? You, would that ring a bell? No, I thought it's it was a, a round one. number. I thought okay. it was a round number. And and then, and then I upgraded it to the premium to the reserve. Yeah, nice. for four fifty a, a year, okay. which is a great deal of money. But again, um, I would spend at least four fifty in. In in luggage. Okay. And what I get out of the reserve card, and this was before I was diamond, was I got free uh, Sky Club. Nice. And you. it's great. Right. Which is great because when I walk in, when anyone walks into an airport, you spend $10 at least. Yeah. On coffee, on a donut, on a book, on a magazine. If you go to the Sky Club... Uh, you get a free hard boiled egg if it's the morning. <laughs> they have bre- they, you know they have breakfast. They have a weird lunch, whatever. But you get free coffee, Great. free soda, and free iced tea, and um, that that will that'll add up because yes. that's that's ten fifteen bucks every time you walk into an airport, and then you usually get lunch or breakfast, and and that's fine too. Yeah. And then it's quieter. There are very few children. <laughs> There's a dedicated uh, outlet. Yeah. There's free Wi Fi. The whole thing works out. And, but now I'm diamond member and I have this reserve card and yeah. diamond member automatically gets you into the sky club. Maybe you and downgrade I'm, the card. Maybe I downgrade the card. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think? I think so. The, the key to whether or not you want to pay an annual fee on a credit card is do the perks I get make it worth it. Um, right. With, with these airline cards, everybody, everybody charges a, a fee to check a bag these days. Yep. It's like 50 bucks round trip. Yep. So if you make two round trips on American, it's worth keeping the American card. Right, because that that's 100 bucks. The, it's 100 bucks. So mm-hmm. you, you might as well just keep that card. Yep. You don't need to downgrade it to a free version. You just keep it. Right. You keep and, using it. And Southwest doesn't even have a paid version of their card. You just get double the points because they and they have free luggage. Yeah. You get up to two bags for free. Yeah. So uh, I usually never travel with more than – it's usually one bag. Mm-hmm. I usually – and now – as a diamond, I get three free bags. And oh wow! That's, see, that's nice. That's crazy. Yeah, I think you need to downgrade. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. It's uh, but what if I'm not diamond next year? Oh. Go back up. Well, that's a great question, and I don't know the answer. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Live your life every day as you, as you as you see fit, Jackie. But you travel so much that I think that makes sense. To it makes sense to save instead to, of spending ten dollars at the coffee bean in the airport. Yep. Go to the lounge. Yeah, yeah. It's it it does it does make sense, and then. Um, yeah, the other thing that I do with airlines, which I don't know if this would be something that anybody else would want to do is I, I pay the Delta Wi-Fi by the year. Do the Indiegogo, is that the thing? It's yeah, GoGo Air. GoGo Air. And the weird thing is the Southwest has GoGo Air as well, Yeah, but they don't transfer per, they used to. And then they were like, nope, we're dedicated. Just GoGo Air, really? Delta portal, GoGo Air, Southwest portal. <sighs> and so, and it, that is four fifty a year. I can write it off. Yeah, but it is. Um, it's, but it's it's and and my sister can use it as well. Sort of like oh, I good. use her Hulu Plus. Right. So we, <laughs> I'm I'm never in the air at the same time as my sister. Yeah, <laughs> so, that makes sense. Yeah, but you travel so much that you some of these things do make sense, right? Because they do cost. It can cost twenty bucks a flight oh, yeah. to, in airfare in uh, in Wi Fi. And granted, I should be working or sleeping or reading a book, but uh, nope, nope, nope. going to tweet, <laughs> going to have a political tirade whilst on the airplane. Eight miles high. Come Eight, on. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 
I, uh, I don't, I, I'm so, I think I was born in the depression because I'm like, I don't need internet on the plane. You don't. I you don't need it. Podca- I've downloaded podcasts to my phone. I can right. listen to music. Yep. Can't yep. read books, by the way. Don't ask me that question about reading books. I don't know how to read books. You don't, what, there's no more book reading in your life? I just kind of, ever since I got glasses, I used to read the most on my bike. I have a stationary bike, a okay. recumbent bike. Yeah. But once I got glasses and needed glasses to read, I should say. Uh, the book reading fell right off the table. Cause Not I even to, Kindle? or cause the, I just, It's more about me sweating and having to take off my glasses and oh, wipe my face every minute. And that makes it hard to read. <laughs> fair enough. I recommend Audible. Oh, wait a uh, second. What is this now? An Audible book? Yes. Uh-huh. They'll just talk at you. And like it's the that. words that were written but are not. So do you read the internet? I do. I read, uh, I, I read a lot of newsy kind of stuff yeah. or articles. and well, Your Wall Street and your journal. Sure, sure. Your so, different things. Yeah. What... Um, so, do you? Is it only mostly credit cards? Uh, well, I also there there are plenty of ways to make money. <clears throat> Excuse me, cough, cough on the internet because not uh, not on the internet. But what they do is like there are people. Everybody goes, "Oh, hey, where's their free money?" But again, I go back to Chase. About six months ago, they sent me an offer, or it popped up on my Chase dot com. Mm-hmm. Hey, earn up to five hundred dollars if you open a savings and checking account. So I was like, "Oh, okay." So I opened a savings and checking account, and I, I met their spending requirements or the minimum amounts they wanted in there. Yeah, and that's that was key. But and then yeah. you get a bonus of five hundred bucks, five hundred dollars. That's right, because you have a lot of sort of you should open up these internet bank account kind of things because there's yeah. these offers. Yeah, there was one that uh, ING or something. Or? Uh, right now, there's an HSBC that's out there offering three hundred and fifty bucks if you open. I think it's a savings account, but okay. you need ten thousand dollars. Right, so you that's need, kind of a thing. You need or, a, yeah, yeah, you have to have a, a, a pile of cash that you can screw around with. Yeah, it's either that or it's like a direct deposit. So some people have direct deposits, so it's like, oh, that's easy. Right. Okay. So okay. So things like that are out there. By the way, we are talking in mid June. This probably will not go till August. So go to chipsmoneytips.com <laughs> for the current whatever That's start true. a banking account kind of uh, deals. Yeah, and I have all my links on there. And I do get a, just so you guys know, I do get a commission if you click on a link on my site and then go Full apply. disclosure exactly. and do it. Yeah. Why not? Good. What do you care? It doesn't <laughs> it's cost the same you deal anything. for you. It's just yeah. the bank gives me a little taste. Yeah, yeah. You just get a little kickback. A little something. A little something, something. Uh, you yeah, sure so you're not it's... Armenian? No. I know. I know, it's nice. <clears throat> the other thing is brokerage accounts. Brokerage is where you can put your stocks. Okay. I don't, I, stocks. Did I just mansplain, by the way? No, no. Uh, uh, I don't have stocks. I mean, I'm sure Andy has stocks because okay. he's a man. No, uh, because he's not a comic. Oh, yeah. As, uh, <laughs> he's a grown-up. He's a grown-up. He's an adult. I married an adult human. <laughs> so he knows what stock. Yeah. So brokerage accounts. My, oh, You know that... Uh, Two of my siblings are in uh, bro- brokerage. Like uh, my my brother's a a, a commodities broker, uh-huh. and my sister's a financial advisor. Really, and then my other brother's an econ professor. Wow, and then uh, my other brother sells the Jesus, and then my other brother is my a sister's kind expert. of in the Jesus biz. There's there's very there's money in it. There's money in the banana stand uh, with with the Jesus. Oh, I don't know what uh, that means, but she she just teaches. Oh, she teaches. <laughs> uh, m- m- uh, the banana stand is a reference to uh, Arrested Development. It's a popular oh, cultural right. reference that I did. Rangers, who's in shock? Because uh, uh, Arrested <laughs> Development is very hard for me to watch because it reminds me of my own family. Oh, so it's very hard for me to watch the insanity. I'd rather just talk to my actual <laughs> family. Oh, see, the, the yeah. brokerage houses. That's another yeah. thing. Your Merrill Lynch, TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, everybody's out there, wants you to put your stocks or your your mutual funds there or your IRAs, your yeah. SEPRA, or your whatever, your 401ks. They all want them to be there. So they make little promotions. Hey, bring over non-IRA stuff and we'll give you up to $600. Okay. But you have to have... A lot of assets. Right. You have to have like movable assets to do all this yeah. stuff, right? Whether it's cash or stocks or. Yeah. And then, and then do you pull it out and move it into the next one that offers you 600 bucks? I try not to be uh, crazy. Like now and then I'll go like ah, every couple of years I'll say, oh, look at that. Merrill Lynch. I've never had an account at Merrill Lynch. Let's check it out. And they actually have free trades. So that's actually pretty good. So I, I, I went there with stuff. You've left there. So this is it's essentially. This is what you do with your savings. Well, it I do that because those, the, that's your assets, right? I mean, it's sort of your liquid savings. I do that with a lot of stocks and IRAs because, again, I, I you're a grown up man. Well, I I was so scared to somehow it got a, drummed into me that you I were should have... scared. You were so from Chicago. <laughs> I was a scared, you guys. Yeah, you guys got to be. 
it was a, uh, it's just something I, I found. I, I don't want to be broke. No, no. You know, so that was like, yeah, somebody drew my mom drilled it in me and my dad. No, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of kitchen money. I, yeah. I, I got cash sitting around and then I've got savings. I do a 10% plan of all the checks that I've ever gotten. You do? I do 10% into my savings. Account. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Just Most people don't I'm, touch that. They don't even consider that. Well, it's, uh, yeah, my grandmother, uh, yeah, whatever. We're going to save for a rainy day, as my grandmother would say, because one day it's going to rain. Yeah. That was her. I was like, it's too bad you don't embroider, Grandma. <laughs> and uh, you put that on a pillow. That'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> so, um, so okay, so what's the plan for, for Paris? Yeah, you got to get to Paris. Here's the deal. Let's do it. There's, you, you and Andy want to go to Paris. We do. Right? So there are ways to get there, and that's by the plane, the aeroplane. <laughs> so you want to get there. Well, all the airlines fly there, but United... Flies there, and I know that. I looked it up the other day. Now, here's the deal. Okay. You could pay cash. That's like $1,500 to fly coach. Right. Economy over each. there. Yes, each. Mm-hmm. So instead of doing that, you say, oh, I want to get some United miles. How do I get there? And I'm choosing United because... Because they drag people off the plane if they're brown. Yeah, right now they're a little sensitive. They're right. nice. They're going to go, hey, <laughs> sorry, no trouble, no trouble. Uh, yeah, let's see. And what, they're going to pay a huge premium if somebody does want to right. volunteer to get off. Right, right. Maybe that's it. Anyway, so you want to get enough miles on United to fly there. Okay. What do you, how many miles would I need? You need 60,000. I just threw in a couple dates. Uh, actually, okay. this is weird. I, I threw in August 28th through September 6th. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you can go from LAX to Charles de Gaulle for 60,000 frequent flyer miles on United round trip. And, and that's coach per that's person. coach per okay. person. And it's going to cost you $87.46 in fees and taxes. Wow. That's not bad. That is not bad. So you only need 60,000 miles. Right. So you could apply for a United credit card, and they have a $50,000 50, mile bonus as we're recording this if you spend $3,000 right. on in the three card months. in the first three months. Right. So that's not bad. That's actually pretty good. Right. That's, that should be doable, if you, especially if you can find things to spend it on. Yeah. Like if, uh, I don't know, some people can pay their rent with their credit card if yeah. I, I don't recommend it. No. No. But you can, I, I, uh, I spend, I use a credit card for everything. I go to Seven Eleven and buy a banana. I do that. Yeah, so does Andy. And I've, I, I used to just spend cash on stuff, but he liked the record. Yeah. So uh, for tax wise, I like the record. I like not having to touch money that's been touched by hobos and booger eating morons. <laughs> it's disgusting. Think about it. And then change. What's that? Who I'm, hangs out at Seven Eleven? But you know, I'm uh, I'm building an immune system, so I've, I'm, I'm willing to touch cash. So uh, all right, maybe and, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I, I'm not like my brothers. My brothers will carry like a lot of cash on them because uh-huh. they saw Goodfellas too many times. <laughs> you got to roll, pull out a roll. <laughs> but okay, so. So, so I yeah, uh, yeah so uh, it's only if you need to spend three thousand dollars in I'm sorry five thousand dollars in three what did I say three thousand yeah, dollars three thousand in three months that's thirty three dollars a day which sounds like a lot but think about it you can pay for your internet your telephones your grocery you can pay for your I can pay for my LADWP bill which is uh, the electric and water mm-hmm. I can pay for everything with a credit card and not get charged a fee except for I can't pay for my mortgage okay and I can't pay for my gas bill okay but. The I gas also, company doesn't take it? Gas company but for some reason, does, DWP? but they charge a fee, and I think oh, it's weird. 1.5%. Okay. But case in point, I needed to, I needed to exhaust $1,000. So I, did, I know because I keep track of my expenses in Quicken that I spend $500 on the gas company for my house every year and 500 for my rental. So I decided to pay $500 to the gas company and pay the 1.5% fee. Okay, because you, you needed to kind of I spend did, the money. I just kind of needed to. Yeah. And so I did that in both places. So... You can use a credit card almost everywhere. You can't pay your property taxes with it or your mortgage or your rent without pay, uh, being charged a fee. Okay. And the fee, it's 2% sometimes. Yeah. It's not the best. Right. It's not the best use. But if you're in a pinch and really want to meet that spending requirement, it's not a bad It idea. can be done. Yeah. So you want to get United Miles to go to, to Paris. We've got to get you to Paris. So I mentioned the United card, but there's also another way to get United Miles, and that is what I was talking about before, Chase Ultimate Rewards Points. Oh, right. If you have a Chase card, you can swap it over for if miles. A, if you have a Chase Sapphire card or any of the Chase Inc. cards, you can sw- you can sign into your Chase.com account and then say, oh, there's my ultimate rewards balance, and I want to transfer those to the mile partners. Who do I want to go to? You can transfer it to United, Southwest, I think Hawaiian Airlines, and you can tra- transfer that to uh, hotels Marriott, I think it's Hyatt, and wow. Ritz. So there are a lot of options, and they transfer instantly to United and Southwest. Okay. So... 
that's why I'm thinking, oh, Chase Ultimate Rewards Points. Very flexible. Yeah. Also, another just something to put in your brain. You could just say, I'm going to I'm going to transfer all convert all of those points into cash. Tax free yeah. cash. Oh, really? Because it's a rebate, it doesn't get taxed. Oh, weird. So you could say, oh, I have all these Chase Ultimate Rewards points. I'm going to just transfer them into, into money. Into money. How much money? It's not as, it's not as uh, good of a benefit. It's better right. to spend it on an airline. Okay. But if you're like, hey, I need cash. Right, you can get cash. So, yeah. So, exactly. what, so if you sign up for a Chase Sapphire, what are the ultimate rewards cards? Chase Sapphire right now is giving 50000 if you spend $4,000. In okay. The first three months. That's so, not bad. Right. So 50,000 points yes. that then can be turned into either airline miles, hotel miles, or money. Yeah. And uh, is it $3,000 worth of money? Probably it's, not. Uh, at a penny a piece. So 50,000 is $500. 500 bucks. Yeah. A penny Tax a piece. Free. Tax free. Yeah. Okay. So like right now, just example, you know, I'm crazy. So I looked on my list. I have uh, Chase Ultimate Rewards points. I have... Three, I have four hundred and forty-seven thousand. So that's what? four thousand four hundred and seventy dollars if I wanted to cash it out. Right, I In could do that. Tax-free money. Tax-free. If you needed four grand. Yeah. Wow. But the girlfriend and I were talking about maybe go flying to New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. Could and you fly to? Because I could fly to New Zealand round trip in first class, the kind that lays out flat. Yeah. For hundred for three hundred fifty thousand points. For one person. For one person. Okay. Or that same flight costs seven thousand dollars. Right. So by doing this, I could actually fly for half price. Right. If I just use those points to fly to the first class seat. Right. Zealand. But just, but only one. Yeah. You'd need two. Yeah, I need two. Right. But uh, so, it, I could just go the economy, which is like 95,000. And you could both go. Yeah, we could yeah. both go. So yeah. anyway, I got off track. We got to get you, get you to Paris. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. No, so, we'll weed off though, because that's crazy. <laughs> Here's the, the uh, Chase Inc. cards. They give you the ultimate rewards points. Now, the one that I like the most is the Chase... Inc. Business Preferred because you just need to spend 5000 on that card in the first three months and they will give you 80000 bonus points. Okay. They charge you an annual fee of $95. Right. So if you're using the math, they're like 80000 bonus points equals $800. Yep. Then they're going to charge me $95 annual fee. Okay, so I'm still going to be up ahead $705. $705. Yeah. That's sweet. That's not bad at all. Not so it's it's worth paying for that card to get the bonus. Right, right, right. So let's say you get the you got to spend five thousand dollars to earn eighty thousand points. Right. Plus you get a point for every dollar you spend. Right. So if you spend five thousand, that's five thousand more points you're going to have. Right. So now you have eighty five thousand. You got eighty five thousand points. Interesting. And then you say, oh, I want to shoot those over to uh, United so that I can have eighty five thousand in United miles. Okay. Shoot that over there, and yeah. then suddenly it only costs you sixty thousand. To, to go fly for one ticket. For one ticket. So you've got more than enough right now. Right. And and you can, on United, can you do that thing that you can do on Delta where you, where you pay both points and money? I don't know. I don't think yeah. you can. I don't okay. know. I just Fair don't enough. know. Well, I've got, I've got probably 150,000 miles on Delta right now. Right. Good. And um, so we could probably go coach to Paris. On Delta. On Delta. Yeah, I don't know their numbers, but yeah. But the weird thing is now... With these Hilton points, I don't know why I did this. Yeah. I wanted a free cookie. That's why I did it. <laughs> it's talk about there's no other reason, nerd. It's uh I get a hundred there was a, there was two cards that you yep. recommended on Chips Money Tips. Right. One was an eighty thousand yep. and that was no no dollars. Right. It was the free one. And then there's a seventy five dollar one and it's I get a hundred thousand. Yes, and a free night on your anniversary, and a free weekend. They free said. weekend? Is it a weekend? It was a whole weekend. Wow. They said on your anniversary. So, um, but with a hundred thousand Hilton points, I assume I can use those for free because those are still there too. Yeah, and I could probably get other free nights with a hundred thousand points yes. in Hilton. Yeah, and um, yeah. So who knows? Yeah, I just used Hilton for it was like thirty thousand for, for a night. For a night? Yeah, that's not bad. It was great. Yeah. yeah, and you can stretch them out if you if you want to stay at the top of the mark, whatever the highest, the nicest hotel is going to cost you more points than a lesser. So right, right. Whether it's a Hampton Inn versus a Garden, exactly versus whatever. Yeah, it's like well, I need to stay downtown at the top in the penthouse. It's like well, you're going to have a that's all your points. Yeah, <laughs> so that's fine. Yeah, and uh... <laughs> so so yeah, so you can get the Paris uh, the, the 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 business thing I mentioned is the Inc. Business Preferred, which gives you the eighty thousand bonus points. You have to be a business. 
okay. to get that card. But like you're a business. You're I'm a, a comedian. business. Yep. You don't have to have an LLC or an S Corp. You know, you could be. You, you can know. just say I'm a business. Yeah. If you okay. you have to show income, so if they ask, they're going to say like, how much do you make in your business? You know, well, I make this much, and I'm a I'm an I'm a sole proprietorship. That's what you call yourself. So when you apply for it, you're a sole proprietor. Right. Whether you have an Etsy account or if you have a have a corp. Yeah. You sell stuff on eBay. You walk dogs. You're an actor. You're a stand up. Yeah. You know, whatever you do to me, if you if you make money on your podcast, if you're out there doing that, whatever. Right. You have a that's what you do and they can give you the if card. If you're an independent contractor, you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. And the and IRS says that too. It's I have a link in my site, IRS approves this idea of what a sole proprietorship is, so you're not scamming anybody. Right, right. You're not lying. Right? You don't want to go yeah. to jail. No, not and, for this. And not for this. This is <laughs> this is just a this is hobby fun money. Yeah, yeah. But the idea that you could fly to Paris for free just by taking a little bit of time, because mm -hmm. most people melt down and go, "I don't have time for this." And I'm like, "Dude, you totally do." You get the card, right? You sit there and you go, "What can I spend this on?" Okay, I gotta pay this. Don't don't go crazy. Don't buy stuff you don't need. Right. But pay for the things you need to pay for. Right. Then after like two and a half months, look at your stuff and go, how close am I to that $3,000? Did I make it? Right. And if you didn't, uh, on my website, I have 11 different ways you can meet a spending requirement. Right. Like you can prepay. You can preload your Amazon account. If you buy stuff at Amazon all the time, you can use your credit card to load up your Amazon account. Oh, weird. So let's say, oh, I'm $400 short and I've paid off everything. I, I don't know how to spend $400 more. Right. You could go to Amazon. Oh, reload my account, $400. Boom, done. And you've done. met the spending requirement. Well, that's weird. You can go to uh, CVS. You see CVS or uh, pharmacies and grocery stores have the kiosk with all the gift cards on there. Oh, yeah. You could go get a uh, visa. Oh, and, and they, just buy a, a You can buy visa. a credit card. You can buy a... With your credit card. <laughs> yeah, you use a credit card to buy a credit card. And now they'll charge you $5. Right. So you can load up to $500 on, on the certain cards. You can see they say on there, load it up 20 to $500. So go in there, use the credit card. Yeah, I need to put four hundred dollars on this uh, credit on this Visa gift card. And then okay. you're done. Then you're done. Don't lose it. Don't sweat it. Yes, don't lose it. <laughs> Do not, because now that is a prepaid credit yeah. card, and you're going to want that. That is a horrible idea if you lose it. Yeah, it's. A <laughs> but that's an easy way to me to spend without actually having to spend. You know, you spend five bucks to meet the spend that gets you eighty thousand points worth right. eight hundred dollars or seven hundred and five dollars. That's worth right. it. Right, and but these are this is. Now Maria wanted me to ask you because yes. uh, you know there's an episode. It's on Bandcamp, you guys. It's a it's a premium episode, <laughs> so it'll cost you two bucks if you want to listen to it. But it's Maria talking about money in Montreal. So uh, she wanted to know what does Chip Chinnery think about Susie Orman? I, what I've seen of hers, I like. Okay, because Susie Orman has uh, she's a credit card spokesperson. Is she? So it's not that oh, she's she against. Go ahead. Credit cards. She likes credit cards. But she has this whole thing about how you should pay your debt first before you even take yourself out to lunch. Never take yourself out to lunch. Never do anything until you're debt free. And Maria thinks that that is a binge purge kind of uh, mentality and that you should pay your debts as slow as you got to pay them. But make sure you live your life as well. W what is your opinion, Chip Chinnery? Uh I'll take my answer off. <laughs> First time, long time. Uh, I, I, I don't carry any debt. And by that, I'm talking about credit card debt. I, I, you know, you pay you them a, all off yeah, every month. Yeah, I actually pay them before they drop because that's another weirdness I do to boost my credit score. Oh, interesting. It's a little wrinkle is that, you know, they, they check your What's credit that? score. Uh, when your credit card statement closes, that's when... Uh, that's For each month? You each mean? month. Okay, close. I, and that's another weird thing I do. I, I have all my credit cards set to close on or about the 20th of the month. So I know when it's coming, I'll go in there on the 18th and pay it off online so that I have zero due. Well, do, don't you – like I get an email saying, hey, your MX is going to be due on yeah. this day. Yeah. Or, hey, your credit card is going to be due on that day. I pay it before the statement drops that would have generated that email. Oh, weird. So, yeah, it's weird. It's a and way that, to – And that – um and you just set that in your calendar. You're like, oh, go pay your bills. Yeah, I mean, I know it's the 20th. So okay. the 18th I rolls around or something. I check, oh, what do I own? What? Click, click, pay it off. And that way I have much less debt to available credit. You know, if I let it slide, oh, you owe $5,000 this month out of your $100,000. Uh, that means I have a 5% debt to available okay. credit. But if I pay it all off, then I have 0% to, to you know. Then it looks better as part of the FICO score. Okay, it's a minor thing. Right? No, no. I mean, this is part of the this is part of the game. This is part of <laughs> yeah. the fun thing. Yeah. Where you're like, how close to what's the best score you can get? Eight hundred or yeah, something? Yeah, I'm. A, yeah, I'm, and, it's eight fifty. 
And then it's eight fifty. And one is a uh, nine hundred. I forget. What, Equifax, I think, goes to nine hundred, but uh, Trans TransUnion and uh, Experian go to eight fifty. Okay, and and so you play, you're you're playing the game to try to get the best score. Yeah, and yeah. I'm at like eight. And how often do you check five. it? Uh, I, I have. I'm set up with a couple free, couple credit cards give it to you free. Like Discover gives it to free, and uh, a City card I have gives it to me free, and an American Express card that I have gives, gives it to me free. So every month in my uh, my uh, oh, it, first it, of the month, I go over to these different places and see what my score was. And then, oh, so you look every month? Yeah, You're like, I print oh, it out. That's hilarious. A PDF. And off. <laughs> <laughs> then I have Yay. a history, a big crazy history. <laughs> you can make a spreadsheet if you wanted oh, to. And then this is when yeah. I started paying the card off before it was dropping and now look at it boost in my score mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah it's crazy interesting interesting <laughs> i uh um where wow. were we i forget what you're talking about oh maria oh yeah. For, so yeah i think uh i don't pay you know my mortgage i have mm-hmm. i pay i pay more than i owe which is fine you know it's kind of a balancing act i don't know but uh if i had a car payment i would just pay that off every month i wouldn't try to pay off my entire car that's before. me personally Okay. But so I don't feel bad about that kind I, of debt. When I first had a car payment first ever, um I would try to pay more on the car payment Which is fine. every month. Yeah. Just because I I'm a I always thought, well, I'm a comic. I don't know what's going to happen. Right. If I have the money, let's throw a couple extra 100 bucks at it if I have it. And then if I don't have it, I don't have it. Yeah. And I just pay the the direct amount. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I mean, I I the last car I try I to always pay more than Whatever I owe, and if I can, I, I pay off the whole credit card. Yeah, yeah. The last car to, car that I had was zero percent, so it wouldn't even make sense for me to pay it off early because it was a, I got the car loan at zero percent. So I was like, no, oh, I get there's no benefit to me paying it off early. But okay. That's, you know. Oh, that's interesting. As right. As far as a benefit. Right. Except for if you don't, what if you miss a payment? Yeah. That's a problem. Then, and if you miss three payments on a car, it probably goes up to twenty nine percent. Well, that's the other thing that I would be concerned about. The system you used is like, well, I don't know if I'll have money in the future, so I'm going to pay off next month as well, and mm-hmm. next month. But then, were you paying it off next month ahead of time, no. or were you just paying extra? Extra. See, then what would happen is, oh, next month you didn't meet, you didn't have enough for that car payment, but you're like, oh, but last month I paid you two hundred extra. Then they say, like, oh, sorry, there's nothing. It, we can that's do. not how that goes. Yeah, right. So you're but, better off saving it. In that situation, but everybody's different. Yeah, in my case, uh, I'm always like, well, I can always find another two hundred dollars. Okay. So uh, well, that's your plan B. That's my, my, guy. my plan B is uh, is is uh, very Elliot Cation. Hey, you can always <laughs> find another two hundred dollars. And so, my, when I was a kid, my dad would go, "I got to go find a hundred dollars," and uh, <laughs> and only once did I ask him how he finds a hundred dollars. I like that. It's because. Uh, He's like, well, I know a guy if I make a delivery. And I was like, no, 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 never tell me again. And uh, <laughs> keep, it to, keep it to myself. <laughs> but as far as uh, Susie Orman, I like paying off all debts on my credit card if you can do it because you're saving interest. You're saving right. a lot of interest. Right, right. So if you like, if, if you have this weird income that doesn't, like a comic, yeah. will have an income that is uneven. Yeah. Let's put it politely. And uh, so – it's hard to have a lot of different credit cards if you have that sort of uneven income. Yeah. Yeah, be if, very disciplined. Yeah, you and and to make sure that you're that you're that you've got it organized right. Yeah, and I I did the road uh, for like 10 years. That's where yeah. we met out there. But we met out there. We met out, out the there road. on the road. But I I remember being 5 grand in debt on my credit cards and I got it and I would eat McDonald's dollar meals. I was getting into it. I'd drink water and not get a coke. Just eat out of the cooler. <laughs> Just to the cooler yeah. you'd have like a loaf of bread and a, bu- and a jar of peanut butter. I remember that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So uh, what was the question? So the, the no yeah, the question was just uh just to make sure people know that if you don't this is this is a this is sort of a hobby, you know. It's yeah. like, it's like all things with dorkdoms, you know. If you and and but but because it's about money, I I want to make sure that everybody is like, okay, this is a fun game, yeah. But make sure that you have money for your bills and make yeah. sure that you're not jeopardizing anything. Yeah, and the, and the, the key to all this, pay off your card if you're going to do this. Don't go spend five thousand dollars and then not pay it off in full, because all of a sudden the benefit you're getting is going to start. Decreasing because, oh, I didn't pay it off in full, so now I'm paying 15% interest. Right. 21% interest. That's going to eat up your big bonus. So, right. Then, then you haven't made any. Then, then right. those points don't actually count. It's just basically instead of using cash, use a credit card to pay for things and then use the cash you would have used to pay off the credit card. Right. And you can do that at any time, by the way. So if you have 
I know I had a tenant who told me how he used to get online and he'd pay his card off every time he made a big purchase. So he would do it 10 times a month, whereas I thought I was crazy just doing it a couple of days before the statement dropped. I do that. Do you? Yeah. That's I'd, great. Uh, You're I'll keeping pay it my credit. Control. Yeah, I, I pay off my credit card probably two or three times a month. That's great. I just throw – and Andy's like, no, when I get the bill, that's when I pay the bill. And, uh, and I was like, well, that is also a way to do it. Yeah. And, and he – you know, he gets a bill, he pays a bill. Yeah. I uh, know that there's a bill coming. I try to get in front of that bill. So we're kind of <laughs> similar that way. And that, uh, I'm paying it down early and you're paying yeah. it down early as well. Yeah, yeah. We, very much so. I think I think it's the, the, the uneven quality of stand-up comedy where you're like, well, I want to – because I had a hard time ever quitting my day job because I liked the idea of the, the having a regular check. Absolutely. And, uh, and I never cared what kind of car I drove, but I wanted to kind of a – not a nice apartment, but I, I needed it to be clean and, and in a decent neighborhood. Right. Right. I wanted a better apartment. I always worried about the better apartment than the better car. Yeah. Because I'm in my car. Yeah. You, you're the one who has to look at it. I don't have to look at it. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's 89 Mazda. Who gives a shit? Yeah. You're talking to a guy who's had two cars in 30 years. So What are you driving right now? Uh, 1999 Infiniti G20. It's from the 1900s. That is, it's from the 1900s. Yeah. And uh, is it a four door sedan? It's a four door. I guess I, a sedan, right? I enjoy a four door sedan yeah. myself. I don't yeah. like two doors. No, I get them. no. It's uh, how, how are you going to get people in the back seat? Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> be moving that seat up and down like in 1978. Right, right. It's uh, yeah. <laughs> I, and and I'm not that cool. No. It's not just me and a date. No. So, so Susie, I I think you should Susie Orman. I would say pay off your debts. And I I you know let's be honest, people. We all think we all have this lifestyle issue. We think, well, I need to. Hey, I got to live my life. I got to go to Starbucks. I got to do this and that. And it's like, well, you're not living your life. You're living the life of someone who has more money than you do. Right. Let's just be honest. Right. You, you can live within your means. Yeah. You don't have to have Starbucks. You don't have to, you know, go out to dinner if you can't afford it. Don't just do change it. it. Well, the weird thing is, is I think that there because my sister, as a financial advisor, has yeah. advised me previously. This is that there is a, a happy medium between that. Mm -hmm. and, and don't not treat yourself to something ever. Yeah. Because if you live this weird, frugal, you know, aesthetic, yeah. you know, if lifestyle, you will snap. And then <laughs> all of a sudden you'll buy a tennis bracelet. Yeah. And that isn't anything anyone needs ever. And uh, so. But you're right. Like you could buy Starbucks coffee and make it at home for a lot less than buying it at Starbucks. Right. But if that's your thing, yeah. if your thing is, is, is I like to go get a cup of coffee every day and that's your $3 purchase every day, do that. I agree. Make it not, f you know, don't do it four times a day. May, yeah. Be aware that that's the thing. That's that's the that's yeah. the thing you like to do for yourself. If that's a thing that you get up and you love going to Starbucks, and it's only three bucks, five bucks, whatever, but right. it makes your day so much happier. Right. It positive. simplifies your 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 life and makes and 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 makes you feel not poor or yeah. not in trouble. Yeah. Do the thing that you want to do is what Darla's like. She's right. like. You'll that makes sense. Yeah. Don't do 10 things that don't, are extreme. Yeah, you don't have to do 10 things. And <laughs> just, go, I'm broke. I'm broke. I don't know why. Well, okay. You buy yourself flowers and <laughs> you also get uh, the, a shake every day. Yeah. So yeah. it's, so yeah, but sort of pick one or two things that you like to do a week that or a day that, that, that treats yourself right. And, and cause my, you know, my father's attitude toward money was always, I make money, I spend money and then I go, I make some more money. Uh -huh. And that's his whole thing. And now he is 80. Yeah. And he doesn't have any money. Ah. And he doesn't care because he still does that thing. Really? And he's fine. Okay. Yeah. See, I would not be well with that. I would. No. I would be. No. Uh. Other people are like, I'm not living like that. That's a terrible way. <laughs> I like to have some sort of cushion. And my father doesn't care. No. He's like, it'll all work out. Well. And guess what? It always has. It's, yeah. So he's got that going for him. Yeah. And. Um, I am doing calisthenics here. Can you see how much yeah. I'm moving around? Yeah, it was just my uh, Asperger's hump is acting up because we're talking about money. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I saw that. It's a, it's a. I have social anxiety when it comes to That's money, funny. so I'm like, let's stretch and talk about it. That's sure. funny. I want to be super supportive, Chip. Wow, this is interesting. And you have all these money people in your in your family that I think that's why it does. Is it, it partially like I'm I'm irritated at them? I'm going to psychoanalyze. Well, I'm not gonna. My thing is, is, is like, I never wanted to be in, like, I never wanted to sell merch. Uh -huh. You know how, like, it wasn't okay right. in the 80s and 90s. You were a hack if right. you sold merch. And then everyone, all the comics were like, oh, that's how bands make their money. And bands are cool. Yeah. Uh, let's make money. 
And so then it, of course, got taken away again because there'd be guys who would have like a frog and it would say rub it. And then you're like, ah, <laughs> oh, fuck you. And you're <laughs> the worst hack in the world. <laughs> you can still be a hack and sell, sell crap. Yeah. But then I decided that I was like, oh, I'm not going to sell. St-. I was like, I never wanted to sell stuff because I was raised to sell stuff. Yeah. And then probably 15 years ago, I did. I I decide or less than that. I don't know when my first album came out in like 98 or 99. Yeah. I was like I'm going to do an album. Albums are respectable. Right. And so I did an album. And I used to do a bit about how um on that on that first album which is no longer in print. It's on now that my second album. Whatever. So it was an album album like a vinyl? No, no, a CD. Okay. But it was a CD that I burned on my computer. And then I put those stickers on them, right? I and I those. color copied, and I and I made them jewel cases, and you know right. I assembled it myself. It was nineteen ninety nine, yeah. ninety eight, and it was. And so I was like, well, it's respectable to sell CDs. Yes, it's not respectable to sell uh, um, swag t-shirts. and t shirts. Yeah, yeah. And then I started the Dork Forest in two thousand six, and I was like, oh, you can sell t shirts for Dork Forest. And so in like 2008, I started selling those t-shirts and then the design changed and then I got a second design. Yeah. And and then you got people buying who bought the first one, probably bought the second one as well. Right. And then, and then I, and then a couple of years ago, I wrote the spooky reading girl bit. And so I decided to get a t-shirt. So I've got three t-shirts and four albums and a DVD now. That's I'm great. like Walmart. <laughs> and people are like, well, do you want, do you have a women's cut? And I was like, no, no, I don't. I just have unisex. Feel free to get yeah. creative. Yeah. You have a sewing Somehow. machine at home? Exactly. Well, that's Somehow. where your women's cut is. Right. Get, uh, get a pair of scissors yeah. and, uh, and figure it out. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's and, good. Uh, yeah. It's got to go unisex. It's <laughs> just for gummy bears. And, uh, but I think it's smart. I remember working in 1988. Nine on the road early. Vic Dunlop had Vic Dunlop's crazy comic eyes. Oh, those glasses. Well, these were like eyes. Like they were like Googly basically eyes. Yeah, they were like a ping pong ball cut in half. Mm-hmm. And he uh, he would at the end of his show he just he'd pull out this big ring. He'd put them on a big ring around his neck. Who wants eyeballs? And then he'd sell them sell them for three bucks a piece or two for five. In eighty nine. Yeah, and yeah, I was I remember like, remember that because I love commerce and I love. I was opening for him. And I'm like, this is great. What is this? And I go over. To see him at the hotel, at the Luxbury Hotel in Cincinnati. <laughs> Somebody has a great line. I don't know who says it, but Luxbury Hotel. We put the B in luxury, which I loved because <laughs> it made sense. Anyway, but Vic's over there and I'm watching uh, HBO and he's got a stack here of eyeballs and another thing, a card that he sticks in a little baggie with the eyeballs and then he staples it and then he puts a hole punch in it and runs it through a string that goes on a ring that he wears around his neck and i'm like he's just making a little uh assembly line right i'm like this is amazing how many how, how he's like i do a five minute commercial for these things right at the end of my act basically doing jokes and then everybody wants to buy one i just loved it right and they were just he would they were just ping pong balls that you would attach to your own glasses i thought they, they were, were t- boingy boingy glasses are they not well unless he changed them but at the time they were just it was like a ping pong ball with it looked like an eye it was basically the size yeah. of a ping pong ball cut in half and you just stick them You'd lift your eye, eye, eyes wide open, and then oh, you'd hold them in your eye like a monocle. You'd hold them in your eyes like a monocle. Yes. Okay. And so, and he, he would sell ping pong balls essentially that he had colored. And well, he he bought these eyes from China somewhere, so he got actual eyes. So he didn't have to cut oh, okay. anything, but so they were about even... the size of a ping pong ball. Yeah, know? yeah. And he put them in, and uh, people loved them. <laughs> and you'd get a pair of them for three bucks. Yeah, and you had this. Uh, uh, memento or souvenir from the comedy show. People love a memento. They love a souvenir from a comedy <laughs> show. <laughs> but Vic Dumlap is actually famous for those damn eyes. And then he got sued, I guess, uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, is he still with us, by the way? I don't know. I don't yeah, know, but he must have been. he passed away, but I'm not sure. He's well, a really nice guy. Then whoever's uh, uh, litigating is really an idiot. <laughs> uh, you can't litigate the dead, you guys. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, what else so, did the bammer have to say? Well... What, um, Maria's a huge fan of transparency, right? Yeah. So, like, she just did, um, her, she graduated from the University of Minnesota, mm-hmm. uh, liberal arts college, and they asked her to do their commencement speech. And they sent her an email, or they sent her agent an email and said, you know, usually we don't pay for this because we're a public co- institution. And, and so, uh, Commencement speakers are usually would do it pro bono or mm-hmm. whatever, because uh, we have to watch our money, as you can imagine. We're a public institution, mm-hmm. and um, and she was like, "Yeah, no, <laughs> uh, because I'm busy." Uh, well, the the my father's advice 
has always been never say no without a number. That uh, it was the as he as my father likes to say it was the first thing I taught you, and then I said pick up other people's change, and he said that isn't funny, <laughs> and I was like I was kidding, and uh, he said no the first thing I ever taught you was never say no without a number, and what that means of course is you say I'd love to do it I'm going to need eleven thousand right. dollars, and then they say I don't have eleven thousand dollars, and you say. Well, then thank you so much for thinking of me. You know, if your budget ever goes up, please continue to think of me. But know that my prices are always rising. Yeah. So that is my father's advice. Maria Bamford loves that advice with the power of the sun <laughs> and like lives it. And so when they sent that offer, she wrote back and she said, well, you know, I'm a private uh, organization and I need to also keep track of my money. <laughs> and I don't think the football coach is living check to check. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to need 20 grand. And then they uh, they went dark. <laughs> they uh, were silent for two mm-hmm. weeks. Nice play. And then they came back with ten grand. And then she and my I told my dad that. And my dad was like, "She didn't split the difference, fifteen, and settle for twelve five. What happened?" <laughs> and I, I said, like your dad. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> everyone likes my dad until they talk to my dad. <laughs> and then they're like, "He's a bit of a button pusher." <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's all right, but then he's a p- pain in the yeah. ass. And uh, so. Anyway, so that's so she ended up getting ten grand for the commencement speech. That'll work. But she didn't look at the fine print and didn't know she was doing two speeches. Really? Yeah. So um, essentially, five grand a speech, and then of course after taxes and agent fees, she ended up walking with five grand, right? Yeah. And uh, plus air and hotel, I'm sure. <laughs> and <laughs> did she do the same speech twice? Or two she did the speeches? same speech twice, and the speech was it opened with the story of how she got the money. Oh, that's cool. Because uh, she said, this is essentially a final exam for liberal arts. If you have a liberal arts degree, (laughs) how to negotiate your contract. And so she tells the story of my dad. She says that she asked for the 20 grand. She says they offered her the 10. And then she talks about sort of the different mistakes that she's made and how they might want to not (laughs) make those mistakes. And then she closes asking if anyone has student loan payment. And then uh, she picks someone in the audience who says that they do. She asks him on the stage, and she gives him a check made out to Sally Mae for five grand. And she really? did that twice. Yeah. That's really nice of her. It was amazing, right? And, uh, yeah, she doesn't, you know, she also is not living to check to check. And she thought it was an excellent example of both negotiation and generosity yeah. and, and giving back, right? It's very nice. Well, it's fine. It's uh, whatever. And uh, the – but the weird thing is, is what – what do you recommend about student loans? Do you oh, have any ha- student loans? I loan have stuff? an opinion on that. I think it's child abuse. For parents who get a – you get a student loan and lay it on your kid, that's terrible. At the, well, the kind of student loan it is today. Right. It's, it's huge money. If it's forty grand, 180 Yeah. 120 yeah. yeah. We have forty grand a year, whatever. It's like, why, why? And then so you're going to get out and have that debt on you? Mm-hmm. And you can't, just, you can't get rid of it in bankruptcy. You can get yep. rid of all your other debt. But right. for some reason this is – not something that gets You touched. can actually uh, put it on your credit cards. Can you? Yeah. And then default on those credit cards, uh, which is not what I did. Um, but that ultimately would be bankruptcy, right? Well, it's not. Well, it's, gonna... it's sort of bankruptcy. What I did was uh, I just had shitty planning uh-huh. as a comic and ended up being about $21,000 in credit card debt uh-huh. that I stopped paying. My student loans, I stopped paying, but that they never went away, of course. Yeah. Um, I eventually, so everything went to collection, not the student loans, but everything else went to collection. And, um, and so I ended up calling the collection agency and saying, what do I owe you guys? And they said, 21 grand. And I said, what will you take? And they said, six grand. And so I gave them six grand, Mm -hmm. uh, when I finally had six grand. Right. And cause pennies on the dollar is what these people are buying it for. And any amount of money is good. And it had been seven years, and that was – I did it right before I got my first car loan because mm-hmm. uh, Andy was like, that Mazda 323 is a death trap. <laughs> I will help you buy a new car. And right. I said, well, you're going to have to – I'm sorry to say this, co-sign a loan because I have the worst credit yeah, rating ever. Yeah, because credit's bad. So – Because you settled. You, you people I- – Right. But get this. I go and they check my credit rating, and it was really good because I had paid it off. Showed up. Even as- even though the it was through collection agent and it was seven years old debt. Okay. Because okay. it was super old debt and I paid it off through the collection agent. It worked out. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my student loans, my student loans were only about uh, 
14 or 16 grand because yeah. I graduated in 88. And, uh, but yeah. it still took me 30 years to pay them off because of interest rates and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And I ended up, I probably paid them off uh, eight years ago, five, okay. six years ago. Yeah, I had like 7,500 in student loans. Like yeah. I paid for half of my college. Right. But there's, I mean, there's no way to go to college without taking out a loan oh. unless your parents are fabulously wealthy. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I, 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 wrote to, I went to Miami University in Ohio, and I asked them, would you send me the tuition information from 82 to 86? And they yeah. PDF'd it over. So I added it up. Room and board for the four years cost me $18,000. For and four I, years? Four years. You can't even do one year now for that. No, no. It's just crazy. I mean, uh, I don't see how people are doing it. And if, if parents just go, well, we're just going to get you stu- a student loan. You're 18 now. We're going to get you a student loan. I think it's terrible. It's bad advice. Right. I don't know that anyone is uh, – I know that our nephew went to college. Uh, Andy's nephew is our nephew. And um, and the organization of his parents, his grandparents, were not – it wasn't great. And, and they didn't – he ended up getting all this credit, all this student loan debt because mm-hmm. he wanted what he had – you know, when you're 18, you're like, I'm going to graduate in two. I'm going to rule the world by the time I'm 25. <laughs> right. And I'm going to be a gajillionaire when I'm 30 and I'm going to have a Lamborghini yeah. and a hot girlfriend. It's done deal. And done deal. Uh, so, I, so the first step of that plan, DeVry. Yeah. Guess what? What? That doesn't work out. Because uh, DeVry is an okay tech school. Yeah. It's an okay, but um, they are not set up to help you graduate. You have to also be an enormous self-starter. Yeah. And so it has – and he had gotten accepted, I think, into the UC system, which is a lot cheaper than DeVry. Okay. But he's like, I'm going to do this in two years. And I tried to say something to him, but I'm not there, right? We're not, I'm not sit, – I wasn't sitting on top of him when he was 17 helping him fill this stuff out. Right. So it is – if you are 17, you need adults to help you get into college. Yeah. My brother and sister were the first in our family to go to college. And – Neither of my parents graduated from high school. And oh. so um, – and my oldest three brothers ended up getting some higher education. But my brother Russ, my fourth oldest brother, was the first one to go to college. And then my sister went to college. Yeah. It was essentially – it was like different generations almost with yeah. the kids. And and so my brother Russ was like, you're going to college. And my sister said, yeah, yeah, you're going to college because they had both started. Mm-hmm. And by the time I was, it was my brother had just graduated when my first year. And so he was like, I'm going to find you a place to live and we're going to hook you up. And my sister was like, I'm going to help you with the grants and the, and the student loans. And we're going to fill out all this paperwork. Right. And my sister had done it by herself. And my father still claimed her on his, on his, uh, his taxes. Right. And even though he wasn't giving her any money, my parents weren't giving her any money. And so my my sister had to go to my dad and say, you have to refile Wow! because can't you be can't dependent. claim me. Yeah. And he was like, what do you, wait, no, it's not going to affect it. And she goes, refile or I turn you into the IRS. And my dad was like, <laughs> allow me to go refile. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, and so when he claimed me, my sister was like, you got to go tell him. And I said, it's either that or he has to pay for my housing this year. And she goes... Oh, try to get that out of them. Yeah. So I went and I said, I'm going to need $600 from you or you got to refile. And he was like, I have $600. And I was like, right now. And he said, why right now? And I said, because we're standing at it. We're right here. Yeah, hook it up. Wow. And, you know, he laughed at me, but then he gave me $600. He had to go out and get $600. He had to go out and find $600, <laughs> which he did. And uh, and I was like, and you do not claim me next year because I need yeah. every grant time. So, I mean, it's weird. Yeah. That's a lot of... Uh, There's some history for me being twitchy about I can about see money. that. I can see that. I, I, I get it now. It's, uh, <laughs> but you love it. Yeah. You love it and you're, and you're good at it. But I you have know? history too. I mean, I remember my... I, at one point after college, I had to say to my folk, I had to say to my dad, I need you to tell me exactly how much money you have because you act like you have about $30,000 to your name. Right. And I talked to my other sisters about that. And they said, yeah, that's about the same feeling I have. And I, I mean, I was, it, it, I got the impression like, oh, I got to go, you know, work in the fields and make money and, to bring home to mom and dad. You know? Right. So I said, how much do you have? And they said, well, it's all mostly in stock. And I said, let me see this. How much stock do you have? And I went. You have a great deal of <clears throat> money. You have a great deal of money. And my dad You're fine. smiled. He goes, yeah. And I go, okay, you need to tell mom that. 
Yeah. Because she says, we don't have any money. I said, she's, Mom. She's living, she's having peanut butter sandwiches because oh, she's yeah. living in some sort of frugal world. Yeah, these people real. were born in, during the Depression. Right. So it's like, uh, you know, and, and thankfully some of the stock they had. My mom had inherited stock from her parents. And so thankfully that was there to help them through tough times and... I just had to go and up and then say, they didn't have tough times, and they were still living like that. And you're yeah. like, stop living like that, yeah. and stop telling all of your children that we have to come back and bring you pennies. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. It was like that was the vibe. And and I said, Mom, you have X amount. She goes, No, I don't. I said, Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Yeah, I do. No, I don't. I said, Okay, you don't, but you do. And I've seen the numbers, and I know. So you what? should just relax. Yeah. And did she ever? No. 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 That's the whole thing. But at least you didn't have to live with the right. with, with with the guilt of not providing for them. It was a weird which is, feeling. Which that is was, weird. The lift it off my shoulders when I was like, Oh, well you're good. You're good. <laughs> you're gonna be fine. Yeah. 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 So All right. Well Chip Chinnery, this has been a fascinating hour, quite honestly. I'm glad. And yeah. So hey, Rangers, it's uh Chip Chinnery. It's a C H I N E R Y. Yeah. So you can look go to my website and see all my High level show business show business stuff or the chips money tips for the money stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it's app chip chinnery. Chip chinnery dot com probably for your showbiz stuff, right? Yeah. Hey, and can I plug a movie I'm in? Yeah, you can plug whatever you want. What September twenty second, Battle of the Sexes. I play uh, Rune Arley, JBC Sports President, <laughs> uh, opposite Steve Carell and uh, Emma Stone. I have an actual movie credit to plug. Oh my it's god, that's amazing! Years. Yeah, yeah. I remember you were you were you were rolling in the in the in the. <sighs> Commercial stuff. Oh yeah, you know what? You know when it fell off the cliff? What? Nine eleven. Nine eleven. Yeah. Who really? Well, got who hurt do you in that blame? One? The Saudis? Please blame the Saudis. Saudis, sure. That's it. Unless you're listening, Saudis. In which case, I was kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a chipsmoneytips dot com, you guys, for all the all the money nonsense. Yeah. That's super fun. <laughs> and then uh, uh, look for Chip Chinnery in that movie in September, uh, opposite uh, Emma Stone and Steve, Steve Carell. That's neat. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing the show. Thanks for having me. And Rangers, you know the rules out there. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. Thank we you. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?